it's really become an evolution of, of how units are displayed on websites. Traditionally, it's been very standard for many years here in our market to have units just displayed in a chart or a, a unit table or a suite table, as we would call it, which really isn't that dynamic. It isn't really that engaging from prospect side. But with this floor plan navigator tool, we are giving an interactive way to, to showcase that availability. So it'll take live look at your availability. It'll display it in a side by side rendering with actual unit availability of floor by floor units. Hello, and welcome to Sink or Swim, a weekly podcast brought to you by RentSync, where we take a deep dive into the prop tech, multifamily, and rental housing industry. In each episode, we uncover the technologies and strategies used to help overcome operational challenges and increase the value of your multifamily investments. So let's get into our conversation today. Hey, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Sink or Swim, the podcast where we navigate the currents of the rental housing industry. I'm your host, Jock Molatis, and today I'm joined by Matt Livingstone, RentSync's Director of Sales and Business Development. Matt, thanks for coming on today. Thanks for having me, Giacomo. My, my long-awaited sink or swim debut. We even got this one on video for those who are watching. So the reason why I wanted to have you on today was because you've just come back from visiting a whole bunch of clients from all around the country, and we think you're going to offer quite a lot of perspective through those travels. So no better time to jump on the pod than now. So I think the best way to maybe open this up is we know there's a housing crisis going on. We know that the market is seeing fluctuation that we haven't really seen before, especially at this rapid pace. So what are you actually finding that people are focusing on in this current housing market when it comes to low vacancy and basically the demand that we're seeing right now with the amount of supply? What are what are your clients saying? What are they looking for? How are they trying to stand out? Yeah, for sure. Now, as you mentioned, I've been traveling across the country. I was recently in Calgary meeting with several clients. A couple of consistent themes that I noticed. One is a need for a, a, a very cohesive and harmonious tech stack. So you want to make sure that you're really capturing that lead to lease experience and collecting all relevant data throughout each of those critical touch points. So you want to make sure that all your softwares are compatible with one another easy to use, right? So so there's definitely been a push to uh, maybe evaluate what you're using on that side of things and maybe uh, make some adjustments on that side of things. The other uh, big theme that we've noticed is the need for innovation, right? So you've got kind of more time on your hands. You're not dealing with as pressing vacancy concerns as you have in maybe years past. It's a slower rental season in the winter typically. So you've got more time on your hands to, to maybe pick up projects like maybe a new website, maybe uh, you know innovative tools that you've been considering and adopting and, and rolling out projects like that. So those are definitely two big themes that I've noticed. Let's focus on a little more about these innovative tools, especially with what RentSync's offering and, and what your team really is trying to, to have as a standout product. So then we want to mention a little bit about the floor plan navigator and kind of the conversations we're having about it. So maybe for those who don't know, what exactly is the floor plan navigator or the FPN? Yeah, for sure. So, so that's certainly the the biggest innovation that we've made in the uh, you know in the recent history here. So, what it is is an interactive tool that you use to showcase your unit availability. So, it's really become an evolution of of how units are displayed on websites. Traditionally, it's been very standard for many years here in our market to have units just displayed in a chart or a, a unit table or a suite table, as we would call it, which really isn't that dynamic. It, it isn't really that engaging from prospect side. But with this floor plan navigator tool, we are giving an interactive way to, to showcase that availability. So it'll take live look at your availability. It'll display it in a side-by-side -side rendering with actual unit availability of floor by floor units. So something like that sounds like a tool that's really beneficial for the renter. You know, I'm looking for an apartment. I'm going to go on someone's website. I can click the exact suite I'm interested in. I can see the floor plan, see what the view looks like. I get that side of things, full transparency. That's the side I, I truly understand. But you're saying that the landlord actually is the one that might benefit more from that than even the renter at times. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like the, the benefits to the renter are pretty obvious, right? They're going to get a lot more information by going through something that's a little more interactive. They're able to see, you know, in some cases, the actual view from the balcony. <laughs> They'll be able to see what direction that the building faces and, and the unit that they're interested in faces. They're able to shop around and compare units and find something that's within their budget and suits their lifestyle. So 
those benefits are pretty obvious from the renter side of things, but there are lots of benefits on the uh, on the landlord side. I would say there's really three main ways to look at it. First, from a marketing side, objectively, it's a, it's a nicer way to display your units. It's uh, it's going to be more appealing visually, and it'll kind of elevate your your rental website for a project. So it's it's a it's a great thing to put on like a, a new development to kind of elevate that that website and digital experience. Another great benefit is on the leasing side. So having these renters book an appointment, get all the information that they need right from the website that I mentioned before, having them armed with with uh, all that information and they show up for their tour, a leasing agent can then just focus on really focusing on closing the deal and signing that lease because they're going to have expectations set really appropriately for the uh, the prospect when they show up. So that's a great tool. And the third benefit that I would say from the landlord side, uh, maybe not be as obvious, but it's super beneficial is on the revenue optimization side. So with a tool like the floor plan navigator tool, you're able to track engagement. You're able to see events throughout the website. So you're able to see which units are being clicked on the most, which units are being clicked on the most and you know, driving conversions. So you're able to see if someone clicked on unit 502, but didn't inquire about it. They inquired on unit 501. So you can kind of make some conclusions based on that. You know, why why is that? You know, we, we thought that unit 502 was going to be this, this hot selling suite type. And we loved the floor plan. We priced it accordingly. So it allows you to kind of test out and validate your pricing strategies and then be agile and adjust your strategy on the fly. You can raise prices if you're seeing a demand that that warrants it. Or maybe you can adjust pricing if, if uh, maybe you're hypothesis isn't being validated in that regard. So three major benefits and and I think uh, very different, but all can be implemented by just having something like a floor plan navigator tool on your website. Like what you hear so far? Make sure you never miss an episode by clicking the subscribe button now. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you for your support. Now let's get back to the show. Yeah. And the feedback's pretty consistent then for, for landlords that they're not only are they enjoying the product, but a lot of this is actually just informing them exactly the tools for it, right? It's so much more than just an aesthetic thing on the site. You're finding that the the feedback that you're we're hearing is we're actually able to understand the data, make really good informed decisions. So far, it's going pretty positive. Yeah, absolutely. Like our our vision here is to make this kind of the default in terms of how units are displayed on rental websites. I'd say the vast majority of new projects that we we work on for for new construction do have this incorporated into their website. So feedback's been great. It's been well received, and it's definitely uh, become part of people's strategy going forward. Now, I think you mentioned before to me that this is actually something that's been in in the real estate space already. Something sort of like a floor plan navigator, right? It's maybe not purpose built rental specifically. Yeah, for sure. So this type of technology is is very commonplace in the condo world. You know, when you you've got a pre-construction condo, they've got, you know, really high-end 3D renderings of the building, interactive models where they show all the different units floor by floor. So that's been around for for years. Now in the condo world, they're kind of dealing most often with with far different budgets than we're dealing with in the right, multifamily right. space. So so incorporating a tool like that into a, a multifamily budget can be a challenge and it might not be possible for all different projects. Mm-hmm. But what this tool allows us to do is is kind of offer that same functionality that can in most cases be incorporated into, you know, a, a marketing budget for that type of, of project. That's interesting though. And maybe just to kind of get your opinion on this, put you on the spot a bit. But do you think there's becoming more of a merger between purposeful rentals and and condos? Especially when you see like, you know, what the price of rent is and and the increases we're seeing year over year, but also what interest rates are and the difficulty sometimes for people to transition into the ownership market. Perhaps this is maybe what's happening, more of an amalgamation of housing where purposeful rentals and the experience someone has should be just the same almost as a condo. Do you think there's some sort of merger happening there? Yeah, definitely. It's just as obvious as like some condo developers are now switching to multifamily development and purpose-built rental development. And, you know, the level of sophistication that's that's happening in our industry is is tremendous at the moment too. And, and uh, you know, the marketing campaigns are at the same level of those that are in, in condo campaigns. So it's, it's, it's definitely been a sophistication increase on, on, the, you know, the purpose built rental side, and also those those condo developers also moving into the space as well. 
And has this been something that's, it's mostly a Canadian thing? Is this more of like a, a commonplace tool in the States? And if so, are we maybe looking to showcase it more in the States? Are we getting reception from anyone down there? I get your perspective on that. Yeah, for sure. It is something that is pretty prevalent in the American market. Having you know an interactive tool that you're able to, you know, find units that you see that on most websites in the states for new construction, and it's something that's been well received. When we're talking to American clients and prospects as well, they're they're interested in in our services in that space, and and uh, we we really are excited about the opportunity of you know having more conversations <laughs> with American yeah. clients on that side. So where does this go then? Because like I feel like when we talk about innovation, it's almost things are, you know, we love the product. What's next? Are we looking? To anything about that or are we kind of staying at where we are now where, where do we see it going yeah for sure so like the floor plan navigator tool specifically it started out as as just like a, a component of a website but we've really see it as more than that it's a, it's a standalone product so it doesn't have to be like a rent sync website in order to, to utilize it it can go on any website it can be incorporated into and we've also seen some some really cool use cases with like i'd go to a, a client's new building and i'd see the website loaded up in their presentation center so there there's a touchscreen tv right in the in the lobby that has the floor plan navigator tool on it and we really embrace that and we've actually rolled out an extension of the floor plan navigator tool called the point of sale device where you can have the same functionality of the floor plan navigator tool but it's a little more i guess natural and seamless to have just a, a pared down version in this these leasing centers as opposed to having like a full on website in your lobby so that's been one really exciting advancement and we're also looking at incorporating 3D models so you can have your static rendering that you can use to navigate or or a 3D visualization where you can see the the neighborhood and the interact and you know the surroundings of the building so that's an exciting development as well and the possibilities are endless i could even see a world where this tool is on your rentals.ca listing, let's say, and people can find the floor plan navigator tool and navigate it even at the listing level. So lots of exciting potential in the future for that tool. Yeah. So there's even some benefits on the corporate side of things then as well. That's It's really more than just like a renter focused tool, right? It, it seems to touch not only a whole bunch of data points for landlords, but corporate side of things, especially what you mentioned. So it's like a touchscreen interactive thing where you can proudly display your building and then you can get that instant feedback right away even just by seeing what people's opinions are just by looking at a suite, right? So there's that instant feedback as well if you're presenting a unit on a corporate level too. Yeah, absolutely. Like I mentioned before, like I, I think that that applies to like a corporate website as well. Like we, we do kind of see this as being the the evolution of how units are displayed on websites, not just for new construction, but for existing buildings too, where appropriate. So having an interactive model on on your corporate site too is is, is definitely something that I could see being adopted in the future too. Oh, that sounds great. But what's next? What's, you know, what else, what else are we talking about when we talk about innovation in the space and what people are using and, and some new tools that we're offering? I'm sure you have a whole bunch of other stuff to, to bring up for sure. Yeah, for sure. RentSync's obviously been super focused on on capturing that lead to lease journey. So our, our online tour booking application has been, been really well received, constantly looking to uh, refine and improve that that sort of tool. I'm also finding there is a, a, a large kind of push by, by some of our clients to um, kind of rethink their corporate website and maybe have a couple of things accentuated a little bit more. A lot of our clients and a lot of purpose-built rental developers and managers, they do so much, such great work in like the, the ESG space and, and having that showcased on their website is an important thing to do. And we're finding a lot of people looking to, to kind of amp up their presence on that side of things too. Yeah, that's interesting. And I'm trying to put it all together, especially when you mentioned, you know, floor plan never be on a rentals.ca listing. It seems like there's a real push for listings on that site specifically, and really all ILSs to just kind of be on the forefront of transparency and safety even. So it feels like addressing not only the back end tech side of things, but also the front facing where we're presenting landlords with not only as much information to give to renters, but just complete transparency. And I know rentals.ca specifically, and, and we try to promote this through the industry as a whole. It's just the importance of the whole safety thing and the verification of listings and just making sure that, you know, a renter can feel comfortable going to a listing, getting as much information as they can, but also knowing that there's a safe avenue to do so. So I feel like that's almost where we're seeing even more innovation happen right now, especially with everyone moving to online as the only way that they're actually reaching out to these landlords. So I think it all kind of plays together. And even back to tours, right? Like even trusting a, a listing site enough that you're willing to engage with a tour right away to even meet somebody. Even that sometimes is a leap for somebody. 
Yeah, you make a great point. No, having that that trust is super important, and and certainly Rentals.ca is is definitely taking that mission very seriously. Well, Matt, thanks again for joining us. We really appreciate your time. If anybody wants to get in touch with you, what's the best way to do so? Yeah, thanks, Jacmo. I really appreciated having me on. LinkedIn's a great spot to find me. Rentsync.com is a great thing, spot to find. Great me. website. <laughs> You got it. Well, thanks everybody for listening or watching on this video podcast. Make sure you rate and review the pod wherever you listen. Till next time. You've reached the end of another episode of Sink or Swim. Make sure to visit us at rensink.com forward slash podcast to access show notes, key takeaways, and where you can sign up to our newsletter to receive free bonus content. If you found value in this show, please also remember to rate, review, and subscribe. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode. Thanks for listening.